A few days ago, Marble Up got a sweet taste of multiplayer mayhem in a new beta test open to all players on Steam. This was pretty exciting as it gave many players the opportunity to try out Marble Up Mayhem, Marble Up Sister Game, for the very first time. Let's take a look. Upon opening the beta, you are greeted with a nicely touched up title screen, a subtle improvement over the title screen in the base game. Customization of the player's marble also receives a nice facelift. Players now have the ability to add trails and hats to their marbles, showing off their personality with a bit of style. These features remind me of the customization features in games like Golf It and Golf With Your Friends, two other ball rolling games I enjoyed quite a bit. The UI, the user interface, also looks a bit sharper. While this doesn't impact the game to a great extent, I personally think it's nice to have a bit of care in the appearance of the menus and all of their buttons. It just makes the whole experience feel ever so slightly more polished and easy to look at. With all these tidbits out of the way, let's have a look at the game itself. Please note that both the single player and the challenge week modes are disabled in this beta. Now, let's get into the multiplayer. This is the big thing everyone's been excited for. Finally, the ability to roll marbles around with your friends. So, just what have the developers got in store for us? Multiplayer consists of a variety of competitive modes, both in free-for-all and team-based arrangements. Players fight to reach an objective in an attempt to score more points than their opponents. Doing this results in victory. I will be covering all these modes one by one, but first, I need to cover the power-ups. I've put the power-ups in their own section, as they can be used in similar manners across all multiplayer modes. You can use them to either reach an objective faster, recover from falling off the stage, or to shove another player away. With options like these, you really need to think about your power-up usage carefully, forcing you to come up with strategies on the fly. Let's delve into the power-ups themselves. First up, we have the Feather Fall, the Super Speed, and the Super Jump, and power-ups which were already available in the main Marble Up game. One makes you float and fall slowly, one makes you accelerate rapidly in whichever direction you're facing, and one makes you jump up high. Fairly straightforward stuff. Next, we have the Blaster, which is more of an ability than a power-up, as it isn't something that can be collected, and it's bound to a different hotkey altogether. The Blaster allows you to shove players away or get a bit of extra height for those tight jumps. Once used, the Blaster goes into cooldown and recharges after some time, so use it wisely. Finally, we have Mega Marble, a power-up that makes your marble, well, mega. Essentially, while you have Mega Marble active, you can knock players away easier, and other players have a much harder time getting rid of you. You'd want to get this power-up if you want to play like a tank and secure that objective without any pesky intruders. Just make sure you don't get stuck on any obstacles. Oh yeah, I should probably go over the stages of multiplayer as well. The stages of multiplayer are almost entirely different to the stages in the base game, with some bearing a resemblance to existing Marvel Up stages, such as Surf's Up and Platinum Playground, and others being entirely unique. Each stage has challenging obstacles and stunning features everywhere you look. Sloped ramps, half-piped ramps, ice, platforms, barriers, pits, and a bouncy yellow surface which is only used in a few places and was not present in the base game. I'm not going to list all the available multiplayer stages as I didn't get footage of all of them, but some of my favourites include Mosh Pit, Frostbite, and Pythagoras. Now that we're familiar with power-ups, stages, and their presence in multiplayer, I'll talk about the various multiplayer modes. First up, we have Gem Hunt, a mode that can be played in free-for-all or in a team versus match. Players roll around the stage collecting as many gems as they possibly can, in a collect them all styled competition. Once all the gems are collected, they spawn in a new location on the stage, leading players on a big chase from point to point. Different coloured gems yield different amount of points. Pink gems are worth 10 points, yellow gems are worth 20, and the blue gems are worth 50 points. The team or player with the greatest number of points wins the game. A simple but fun game mode that is quite easy to learn. My only issue with this mode is some of the stability issues on one particular stage, Surf's Up. My frames tended to dip to around 40 FPS, most likely due to the sheer amount of entities on screen. 
Speaking of frames, I had my FPS capped at 75 frames per second during the beta, which matches my monitor refresh rate. This doesn't affect the game visually and it really isn't a huge issue, but when playing the base game, the experience feels much smoother when playing at a higher frame rate, like 200 FPS. Apparently, this frames issue was due to some stress testing performed on the servers during the beta. All things considered, I expect stability to be much better in the final product. Next, we have King of the Hill, a team-based siege-style game where each team must hold control over designated zones. This control is dictated by how many players from each team are inside the zone. If one team has more players in the zone than the other, they take control, and so they start earning points. These zones start off quite large and shrink down over time, completely disappearing and respawning in other parts of the stage. Whoever holds the zone the longest gets more points, and therefore wins the game. You can earn more points for your team by controlling the zone at its smallest point. This is a challenging feat, but it might help you snag some much needed points in the final second of a match. Using your blaster to knock opposing players away from the zone is a must, so instead of spamming the blaster, it's probably best to save it up for when a bunch of opposing players are approaching. Playing this game on high ping was quite difficult, but I still had a blast. My only issue with this game mode was how it's played on the Nexus stage. The zones felt too far apart from one another, and gathering points for your team felt less like a constant battle and more like an intermittent one. I'm guessing this is a pretty unpopular opinion, and again, I don't see this as a huge issue, so I'm looking forward to playing more of King of the Hill in the full multiplayer release. The next game mode is Zombies, a survival-based mode where a few players start off as zombies. Their objective is to infect other players by hitting them or blasting them, which gains them points. The rest of the players try to survive until the timer runs out. Surviving for longer yields more points. Despite the team-based nature of this mode, the victory is decided by the individual player with the most points, whether they are a zombie or not. I personally think this game mode works well for me, as I have high ping living in Australia and all. It's a lot harder for people to catch you when they have no idea where you really are. I also like to stay airborne while trying to survive, as it means I'm pretty far away from most of the infected players. They could potentially plan where I'm going to land and try to snipe a kill on me, but by the time they've slowed down to be by my side, I've already adjusted my aerial movement and bounced away just fast enough not to be caught. Having a cat and mouse game mode like Zombies adds another level of chasing your friends by going fast and marbled up. Trying to survive with a dozen infected players around you really puts you in the hot seat, and it makes for a thrilling experience. Speaking of the hot seat, it's now time to talk about Steal the Crown. Who will be the ruler of all the marbles? That's up to you to decide in the Steal the Crown game mode. In a free-for-all match, each player fights for control of the crown, which yields points while being worn. Similar to the Zombies mode, players can steal crowns from one another by hitting them or using their blaster. The winner is the player who has held the crown the longest, and therefore has the most points. When the crown is on your head, or marble, all eyes are on you, and every single player is thinking of ways to catch up to you. This really puts you on your toes, and so it's very easy to make mistakes. The almost joyous frustration from doing so is balanced out by the fact that you can just as easily steal the crown back in a few seconds, if you play wisely, or corner your unsuspecting target. This mode is another cat and mouse chasing game, but it's less about survival and more about fighting for royalty. The quick thinking required for this game mode makes it a challenge, but not to the point where it is overbearingly difficult or just downright unfair. I'd say this mode is just right. And now, for the mode we were all waiting for, it's soccer. This game mode was actually leaked before this multiplayer beta was available in an alternate reality game organized by Marvel Ops developers, where each letter of the game mode was revealed one by one in various locations on the internet. Unlike the rest of the multiplayer modes, soccer has its own set of unique stages, seven to be exact. The soccer mode is pretty simple. Two teams use their marbles to get a soccer ball into their respective goals. One goal equals one point, and the team with the most points wins. It's pretty much Rocket League and Marbled Up, but with a few twists. The power-ups in Marbled Up give this soccer game mode a unique flavor. Power-ups like the Super Speed and Mega Marble aid players in rushing to the defense or building up a defense, as well as just being pesky for the sake of it. 
The blaster ability also allows players to more easily hit the soccer ball when it approaches, and gives each player a defense mechanism if too many opponents are shoving the soccer ball or just intruding on your position. At times, the connection between my marble and the soccer ball seemed to be inconsistent or downright non-existent. This may be due to my high ping as mentioned previously, but I'm curious to see if more players experience this issue independent of their ping. Out of all the multiplayer modes we've seen here, soccer is probably the strongest team-based game, as it requires coordination, strategy, and most of all, teamwork between each player. Having all players rush to one goal or having them just stick to the ball is less than ideal positioning, so it's best to probably spread out and move accordingly. Controlling the chaos and using your head to meet a common goal, no pun intended, really helps separate soccer from the other game modes, and I think I'm justified in saying that it is a fan favorite. As someone who is a classic player, I'm really happy to see Marbled Up spreading its wings and broadening its horizons like this. I feel as if Marbled Up Mayhem is a much more user-friendly approach to a 3D ball rolling game, and I genuinely hope it attracts some newfound attention to this amazing community we have. I think one of my favourite things about multiplayer was the party game-like nature of it. I would hardly think about winning the game, and would just turn my attention to having a ball. Again, no pun intended. This more casual feel adds a fresh element of being able to screw with your friends in real time, and it's one of the many things that makes multiplayer mayhem a priceless and incredibly joyous experience. Marbled Up has had competitive roots for quite some time, and to see a side to the game that is reminiscent of a party game with friends just makes the game a whole lot sweeter. I'm hoping this new side of the game appeals to players new and old in a positive way. Thanks for watching. Hey, it's me, Haran from the future. Did you want to see more discussion based content from me? And what did you think of the Marbled Up beta? Let me know in the comments below. Take care.